This is a Skeptic Frogs production. Fire. Air. Water. Earth. Long ago, Avatar Korra visited the glorious Republican city founded by Fire Lord Zuko and Avatar Aang after the events of the Hundred Year War. There, she accomplished a lot for the world, opening portals into the spirit world, thus fusing the two together to hopefully unite them both in harmony. She helped stop the oppression from the Northern Water Tribe to the south, and freed the Earth Kingdom from tyrannical rule against an unjust and forceful queen. Through all this, she not just created peace for the nations, but a state of balance for all. For the next 40 years, she helped the White Lotus Society in forming schools around the world, with hopes to open one in each nation. These schools acted as not just a place for keeping knowledge, but also as training grounds for new members of the White Lotus to assist the Avatar in being peacekeepers of the world, as well as give the Avatar a safe haven to study and grow. Now, eight years have passed since the Avatar's untimely end. Having failed in opening schools in three major nations without help from Korra, remaining unaware of what caused her death, and being unsuccessful in stopping the assassination of the Earth King, the White Lotus Society has slowly lost its grip on the world. With fear that the Avatar line may have ended those eight years ago, and with withering hope for the White Lotus to continue holding peace, the search for the next Avatar hastily begins. Previously on Dice Bender. Yang is skinny. He's about six feet tall. He's bald head. He has no arrows whatsoever on his body. Taro is six feet tall. Um, she has half her head shaved. It is um, like a dark auburn color. Um, she's wearing glasses. Her skin's pretty tan. I'm Jaeger. I'm six foot. Got a bunch of scars on me, black hair, gray eyes, and 180 pounds of man meat. Um, Kevin is six foot tall, slight bill, 180 pounds, brown skin, blue eyes, jack black short hair. Z picks up something off of the ground. It seems to be a stack of what it looks like cloth. Each one of you look down at your hands, and you open it up, and you sure enough see this navy blue sash and a white lotus welcome to the white lotus society bork smiles looking at all eight of these students and he goes because there are eight of you here we've made these uh these cards for you to draw from as he says that he kind of gestures with his right hand z walks up with you uh, to each one of you and she has a small deck of what looks like playing cards and it's her hand out for you to draw one as she walks in front of each one of you. Each card has a room number assigned to it. That'll be your new room. These rooms will be shared by others in this line. They're not just going to be your roommates but also the team you'll be working with. Those of you who are from this school and he kind of just uh, looks at the ones that are from the school, Taro uh, and two of the others that are the, uh, I guess, generic ones, I could say that. They would all have names, but they do have names. But anyway, uh, he kind of just gestures to whoever is from the school and continues. Help the ones who will be lost to find their new living spaces. Teachers and I, and I need to get together to discuss a few things, but once we are ready to meet up with these teams, we will give you guys a call from the rooms. So do wait there. And he gives a bow to each one of you. The teachers all bow. You see the other four students, they take a bow. I kind of stand there looking nervously and glancing at the bedroom. Okay. Uh, you, you're glancing, but you, your eyes lock on Go for a second, and Go just gives you a, a, a pleasant nod. 
I take a deep breath and uh, force myself to look away from Iro and focus on the task at hand. Okay. Uh, the teachers all walk away and all the students are open to look at their cards. Every single one of you turn the card over and you see it has words right wing um, room 204 now each one of you all look at each other uh, you look at the other people they seem to have gathered themselves in a, in a group uh, and are discussing but you all can't help but feel all four of you have cards that say the same thing 204, anyone, anyone, anyone? We got a 204? I don't even know what my have said yet. Panic attack. Oh, every, you four have 204. I got 204 too. Um, I, I have a small panic attack, but I step forward. All right, so all four of you are um, standing in a circle with each other. This is Taro. You have met these three individually, but none of the others have met each other. Um, this is really your first time. Each one of you just having time with the people that are around you right now. You don't have your teachers around you guys. You don't have uh, anybody else to distract you. It's just the four of you standing there. Know that you're, uh, know that you have to head over to the room that is on this card. Uh, so if anyone wants to just start going to do that, they are welcome to. I start walking there. Me too. I'm going to give one last look at Iroh and make my way to the dorm. You guys are going the wrong way. How about you? How about you lead us? Because we have no idea where, where we're going. I got yeah. you. <laughs> she says that all three of you just kind of freeze in place. Each one of you have a foot that's about to touch the ground and stop and realize that you guys have no idea where you're going. I got you. Follow me. <laughs> I lead the way. You lead the way. You head over to... Uh, it says right wing, but you know, compass-wise, it is the south wall of the school. You guys head up to the second room, uh, second story of the school. Head over to room 204, and the four of you are standing there. As you guys walked up onto the second floor, you see the room 206 door close behind one of the people that were in the line with you guys. Uh, you open the door and each one of you walk in and you look around and see this room is a fairly large room. There are four beds are each in their own designated corner and within that corner is not just the bed it is also a special desk for that corner, uh, a chair for that corner and they even have a drape or a curtain that you can pull to give yourself privacy within your own little corner. Um, the interior of the build of this room is imagine basically a studio apartment but with living for four people so you have yourself a small kitchen area on one of the sides you have in the center of the room a uh, couch and coffee table and uh, a very tiny TV because this is you know, this is Avatar but this is post core so they have the technology for TVs at this time uh, you see a small rotary phone that doesn't have to be attached to the wall it is sitting on the coffee table you look over to the side you see there is a door most likely leading to a uh, bathroom but you see directly in front of you uh, where it's facing the door is a window that you can look out of and see um, south towards the direction that the swamp would be for anyone that's looking at an avatar map. But you guys shut the door. Each, four, each one of you four are standing in this room with basically complete strangers and the option to pick whatever corner of the room you would like. 
turn it okay. I'm going to take the left corner close to the door. I go to the far right. I'll go wherever Yang doesn't go. <laughs> I, I go to the left corner, uh, the far left corner, top. All right. Which means, Taro, you get the right door corner. Uh, and I am going to start with, we'll go in reverse order of the initiative. So, Taro, you walk into your right corner. And this is your room now. Uh, this this has been your home for some time. This school has. Uh, and you see that there's space for the stuff that you had in your previous room that you were sharing with a student. But you don't live in that room anymore. You are now an official member of the White Lotus Society. So you're not just a student. Uh, you know that you have to at some point go and get your stuff. You get a knock on the door, you open it, and you see, and everybody else may see this too unless they're distracted. You see Z walk in, she pops off all of your stuff, shuts the door. Now you're standing there, you see all of your stuff now placed in front of the door, or placed in front of your bed. And what are your thoughts as you are organizing your corner the way you would like? Um, I guess like... Taro's got pretty used to, like, living in her other room, so packing up and going into a different room is kind of reminds her of her past, and so she's feeling a little, like, okay, I have to do this all over again. (laughs) And Jaeger, what are you thinking as you have your own little corner, um, your own little space? You have your... Yes, briefcase with you from when you came from the Fire Nation White Lotus School. Shang has always taught you a minimalist lifestyle, which is also something that you knew even before joining the White Lotus Society. So you don't have much to unpack and much to organize, but what's going through your thoughts as you are standing in your own little corner? I'm glad I got a bed. Fair enough. Uh, Kevin, you have yourself a big old briefcase of things, of memorabilia from your family, from your parents, from friends, uh, all in this big old suitcase that you set on your bed. You start opening it up and start trying to organize your stuff. What's going through your mind? I am actually a white locust member, a lotus a member, uh, and also I got all the stuff in the suitcase in this much space I gotta I'm trying to decide which one I actually keep out and which one that's gonna stay in the suitcase for a good while hmm. okay and Yang you came from the Air Nomad Temple so though everyone else had even small suitcase even Jaeger had something small nothing too fancy you the only thing you have is the clothes on your back and maybe something that you are carrying within your your garb. But you don't have anything to unpack except for your mind. What's going through your head as you are staring into your own little corner? Um, how relieved I am to finally be away from the strictures of the air temple. Um... Still a little slighted and hurt at having to say goodbye and to somebody I thought cared about me. Um, and really wishing I could just curl up into Iroh's furry fur and just like hug the lug. Okay. Uh, All of the. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I was going to say, basically the gist is I'm just lost in my own thoughts. There's... It's a lot. (laughs) Mm. 
Yes, it is a lot for each one of you as you guys are unpacking, um, but it's a lot for different reasons. Some of you, you're just so excited to be joining and be a part of this new society, this new group of people. Um, some of you are just excited that you have, as as he said, a bed. Now, some of you are already comfortable with the system and the way this all works. At the end of the day, each one of you are still excited for your own reasons, um, just as you are nervous. Something clicks in each one of your heads as you guys are finished unpacking, be it uh, mentally unpacking or physically. Something clicks in your head. You suddenly all think, seemingly all at once, I'm in a room full of strangers. And these strangers are supposed to be my teammates. All four of you turn around and begin just facing each other. Anyone like to speak to each other? Hi, I think I'm, I'm Kevin. I'm just Hi, saying. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing today, Taro? Oh, you know. This is great as everyone else, I'm assuming. I'm going to turn on the TV. <laughs> you know, you're not even going to introduce yourself to the ones that don't know your name. Well, you know. Okay. So I'm yeah, going to walk, yeah, I'll, walk over to the TV, like try to turn it on. Hmm. Be like, I'm Jaeger. I don't know how this thing works, but I want to know what it does. Yeah, give me a performance check. Performance check. Yeah, I couldn't think of anything else. I think that would work. Okay. Oh, no. I got a three. <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't even know how to turn this thing on. Um, as you're sitting there trying to turn on what you feel is the TV, uh, Kevin and Taro, you guys look and... It's not the TV he's trying to turn on. He's trying to turn on the stove. Um, I just want to see people singing. Uh, the TV's over there. Can you stop trying the stove on, please? This is a stove? Yeah. What does that mean? You're about to burn us. You're about to set the whole place on fire. I'm not even bending yet. You're not, but that stove is. Well, no, that's not how that works. But, yeah, I guess. Would I even know that what a TV stove is? Uh, give me history. Alright. It doesn't seem like something that Air Nomad would enjoy too much. Hmm. Or maybe the stove. Oh my god, a 19 plus. Oh my god. <laughs> I can send a picture. Go, <laughs> no, it's okay. Go um, has told you what a stove is. She's told you about the glorious technology that is the stove. So you you do know. And the TV? Uh, with the TV, you also know that it's moving pictures inside of this big box. Gotcha. So okay. something about it. I know that it'll be something box shaped that seems to have a screen on it. But uh, Kevin, what what are you trying to say? I'm gonna walk over to him and just guide him to what the, the, actually the TV is, due to the fact of my background. Just don't touch me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get over it. <laughs> so do you, do you touch him? Uh, do you try to touch him as you're leading him over? Uh, no, you know how uh, people do. Uh, just try to point them over to the t towards the TV. This is the TV. You more of just uh, gesturely guide him over there. Yeah. Okay. Well, this thing, this box. Yep, that's the TV. Okay. How do we turn it on? It got these knobs over here, and you just turn the knob on. I start messing around with all the knobs. All right, yeah, you, it turns on. Uh, you're not just messing with the the power, but you're also messing with the volume and the the channels. Which uh, in this day and age, there are now four channels rather than the three Ooh. that there were ten years ago. 
So I... it just keeps switching, and you're hearing just un uneligible noises because nothing nothing's fitting together since he's changing the channel so fast. But the volume is going up and down rapidly. I cover my ears. <laughs> okay, let me. Just don't touch the TV for a while. Just don't. Yeah, I think I think I'll just let you handle this. Okay. What is the view outside of the window? You look out of it's the, the window. swampy area, right? Oh, yeah. It's in the direction of the swamp. You guys can't see it from the distance that you guys are. Uh, I was just saying that as, you know, to help people get a visual reference as to where your room is and where this window is facing out towards. So it's facing south. So if you looked if you looked out of this window, Kevin, and if you were able to walk on water for God knows how long, you could walk to the South Pole. It's in that direction. Uh, but this view is beautiful. You see hill-like landscape, uh, some flat landscape, grassy plain sort of thing, uh, some trees, and you're seeing in the distance some mountains. Uh, in the far, far distance, you're seeing this what looks like thick, foresty, uh, woodsy area. It's it's a very beautiful sight, and you're seeing that the sun is beginning to set. Not exactly where you are. Sun rises from one side, sets in the other, and neither of those directions are where this window is facing. But you do see a change of color in the sky as the sun is starting to set for the the day. Is starting to. I'm looking out the window, and well, I'm getting away from the TV. Looking out the window, like. We don't have this in the. We don't have this in the south. A window? No. Uh, things have frozen over. Ah, uh, well, get used to it. Yeah, I got used to trying to get used to it because my teacher did not tell me. Do not bring a fur coat uh, <laughs> all the way up here. I'm over here sweating my brain out. She's on the ground laughing at me. God, I was like, why is it so hot? <laughs> it's better to have one and not need it than need it and not have one. True. That's why I got my coat. It is in my bag, my big old suitcase. And I got to take it to the cleaners or something because it smells like me sweating my brains out. Well, we do have cleaners somewhere. So, what can you tell us about the school tour since you uh, live here? Well, we're living here too, but you live here the longest. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty cool place. Very calm and quiet. Um, what exactly do you want to know? Do you have any idea what they're going to have us do? Or anything? I have no idea. All four of you, go ahead and roll. I guess give me a history check. This is... Well, All four of you. Yang. 12 Yang? 13 15. plus 3, that's 16. 16, 15... Taro got 18. 18. So, yeah, the DC would have been 10. All four of you know. Your teachers have told you this um, over the years. Some of you guys have been doing this for two years. Some of you have been three, been training in these White Lotus schools. You understand now um, because they've told you then. Being a member of the White Lotus Society basically means that you are now active members of essentially the world police uh, you guys because it's in the, this is in the united provinces your school is kind of in charge with keeping peace within the united provinces so you know being members it could be that you guys are going to run out and uh, hold the peace if there's ever something going on in a city within country that needs fixing, you guys will be there to take care of it. Also know that the Avatar is undiscovered yet. You don't know who the next Avatar is. So you do know that 
as members of the White Lotus Society, some of your job could also be in finding the avatar and following any leads that you get from people around the world or more specifically around your country. I had a thought and this went out. <laughs> uh. Suddenly, um, Jaeger, you are closest to this thing, so it terrifies you. But suddenly, uh, the phone starts to ring on the table. I draw out my scimitar. Relax. I'm going to answer the phone. I jump, I jump out of my bed and draw, uh, grab my quarterstaff. Relax, it's just the phone. This is something Taro's y'all answering both, the phone. Both y'all got to get used to this. <laughs> Tar- Taro's answering as Kevin's trying to calm down the rest of the people. Mm-hmm. I walk over and start looking at the contraption. This is Taro. I know who you are. She's talking to the person on the other end of the phone. As as you're hearing the people in the room talking, you do hear someone trying to talk through the phone. So, Taro, you're having a hard time catching what the person on the phone is saying because of the the noise in the room. I'm going to put my hand over the phone and look at the three of them and go, I can't hear them. Zip your lips. What and do you then, mean you can't hear them? Because we're making too much noise, you can't hear them. Hear nobody. Yeah, it's because it's in my ear. I will be hearing them through this device I'm holding in my hand. I go over okay, great. pushing random things on the Oh. I'm going to slap their hands away. <laughs> All right. So with that, Yang, give me a sleight of hand ch- uh, roll. And Taro, give me an opposed sleight of hand. So you both roll sleight of hand. And if we'll go from there. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Not one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you do try to start messing with the knobs. And Taro was able to bat your hand. And that actually really hurt when she did that. She's got a lot more strength than what her body may let on. So you're sitting there, Yang, and your hand is just sore from her batting it away, even though she put very little effort into it. And Taro, you are finally able to focus on the person on the phone. And they say, uh, uh, are, are you there? Hi. Yes. Hi. What's up? Uh, yeah, the... Uh, the Teachers will see you now uh, in the conference room. Perfect. I'll let everyone else know. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Okay. I hang hey. up. <laughs> hey, Kevin's going to say to Taro. I pick up the phone and put it to my ear. Yeah. Uh... Just your boop. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, Taro, you can be in charge of the phone from now on. <laughs> Yeah, I these, kind of figured. <laughs> because these two <laughs> can be trusted around it. Apparently not. Well, anyways, the teachers want us want to see us in the conference room. So best be getting a move on. Uh, I hope they're also gonna beat us too. Which way is the conference room? I will lead the way. <laughs> Follow. And I'm right behind them. I have to duck, duck under the door frame. We all do. We're you all are six all feet tall. tall. <laughs> all of you are a minimum six feet. <laughs> Our Earth fit is taller than us. Uh, are just as tall? Shouldn't these door frames fit us? Well, Kevin, you're saying that as an abnormally tall waterbender. <laughs> you guys head on out um you guys are following taro you see door upon door as you're walking through Uh, a couple looks like teachers open some of the doors give you guys greetings and go about their business uh not you don't see any students in this hallway taro you know that is because this wing of the school is is designated for teachers living quarters and white lotus society member living quarters uh, the first floor of this wing is going to be where some of the classrooms are, but the majority of classrooms and students' living quarters are on the opposite wing, on the uh, uh, 
West Wing, aka the North Wall of the school. You guys start heading through. You guys make your way into the North Wing, which is the Eastern Wall. Find your way to the conference room. As you guys are walking up, you are seeing different banners of each of the nations, not just the four nations of the Earth Kingdom, Water Tribe, so on and so forth. You're seeing six because of the Republic Nation and the United Provinces. You knock on the door, you hear someone from the inside yell, Come in. You open the door, and the four of you step in. You guys see this enormous room uh, with a huge window on the on the wall facing east uh, out into this beautiful landscape much like what you guys had in your room only if you were looking at the map this would somewhat be facing the desert um, you see a wall directly in front of the door is a string of banners just like what you saw outside you see the wall opposite of the window has refreshments it has foods and drinks sitting on top of counters but centered in this room is this giant what looks like a table but you see the map of the world has been earth bended into it just like you know in bossing say it's the same thing uh, you see each of your teachers. You don't see the teachers from before with the other students in this room right now. Just the four of them sitting on different corners of this rounded table. Uh, Taro, uh, you look at Torque. Yang, you look at Go. Jaeger, you look at Shang. Kevin, you look at Vana. They all look back over at you guys. And Torque goes, ah, yeah, come on, sit down, sit down. Sit wherever you'd like. I go and I sit. Same. Yes, also. I sit across from Master Go. All right. You guys sit. Um, yeah, all of you notice with Shang, he has a small ring of fire that is circled around him on the floor as he's sitting cross-legged. Jaeger, would you like to do the same thing? You know this is a, a custom that Shang does. Yeah, I'm going to do it too. Okay, so you light yourself a small ring of fire sitting around you. Um, keep it about an inch off of the ground. Uh, it doesn't really raise much higher than that. And all of you sit down, and the teachers all just kind of look at you all. And Pork finally goes, so did you guys like the room? How is it? The room is pretty good. It's but new. We got to give these two, uh, I'm pointing to Jaeger and, and Yang, a crash course in uh, modern technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, um, I kind of knew that the airbenders weren't too big into modern technology. I know you guys have radios, but uh, else I'm not too sure of. But I'm surprised. I'm surprised our little firebender friend doesn't know anything about technology. I think that he got the TV and the stove confused for each other. Uh, and you see he looks kind of stunned at that and surprised and looks over at Shang. <laughs> Shang, Shang, without even looking at Torque, just says, We do not need to live with these distracting, quote-unquote, pleasantries, Torque. This is not why we called in these students. Uh, I'm gonna raise an eyebrow at what he said and like look at Torque like, uh, what? <laughs> and you see Torque just grows a smile on his face, um, forced smile, and he goes, yeah, I... yeah, I guess you're right. I guess we should just kind of get right into it, shouldn't we? Kind of looks at the room, the teachers all nod. Uh, Shang does not, he just stares. So they all look at the you students, and Vana speaks up, and she goes, So each one of you know now today was the day that you have joined into the society. This is something that each one of you have worked hard to succeed in. I'm not mistaken. I don't know any of you. I do know a student, Kevin here. He's worked hard to get where he is today. He wouldn't have trusted all of you to 
went into the society if we didn't think you were ready. Uh, do do all of you feel ready? I definitely do feel ready. Yep. Okay, well that's good. Uh, I guess the first thing we should do is tell you guys what it means to be a member of the society. Uh, if you don't already know. And Go says, I'm pretty sure with us as their teachers do not need to explain that. If we did our jobs correctly, they would already know why they are here and what they are expected to do. Within the society, at least. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess you're right about that. Um, and Taro, um, you don't have to roll for this. You notice that Torx seems a little... You never see this out of him. He seems a little nervous, and his eyes keep darting back to Sean. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Jaeger, you notice that, uh, Sean has paid Torx almost no mind. Uh, in fact... Basically, since you guys have got here, uh, Torque finally continues, and he says, "All right, since um, since you guys are members of the society, one thing I do need to make clear to each of you: this does not mean that your training is over. You guys are not masters of your bending styles whatsoever. That's going to take many more years. Uh, what this does instead mean, though, is now instead of strictly training and." going to classes, you guys are also now going to be going on missions for the White Lotus Society. Vana speaks up and says, yes, this um, is something that we all decided that would have been good for each of you. Um, each of you are skilled in your own specific ways, and I believe that each one of you will be uh, will work well as a team. I, I certainly think so. Ork speaks up and says, now, being a member of the White Lotus Society and being in the team that you guys are in, you guys have been given a name by the White Lotus Society. It is Team 2B. He smirks and he goes, go ahead and write that down, whoever needs to uh, write it down to remember it. We're Team 2B. Team 2B. Is that the le- the number 2 and the letter B? 2 B Delta kind of- or 2 Bravo? Two bravo. And he looks Roger. at Taro and just smiles and is like, yep. Letter, number. As basic okay. as it can get, Taro. And uh, then Go speaks up and goes, goes, you or will be tasked as gathering intel and doing recon. Uh, mostly intel. Uh, if ever we get any information from different uh, cities in the country, more than likely, your group will be sent out to discover what the problem is there. Or interrupts. Yeah, of course. And uh, actually, in fact, we have a mission for you guys tomorrow, if you feel ready to do that. I'm ready to do that. How about you guys? Taro nods. I also nod in agreement. Yang nods. Awesome, and you see he gives a big smile. He goes, There is a city called Bay Long, which is north of here, north of Amashu. And he does a quick flick on his wrist, and the map that's in front of you guys of the world completely shifts into a much more uh, focused section of the world. Uh, you guys will see on the map that I have put in the chat... It is basically the peninsula where you see the city Bay Long. As Torque says that, you guys look and see. He goes, You're at Bay Long. There have been a couple of people that have been going missing. We take two or so weeks. That is where you guys come in. Joe says, We need you for to go inside to go find that city and figure out what exactly is causing people to go missing. We definitely don't want citizens or civilians or anyone to just disappear. And more specifically, we want to know why they're disappearing. 
Dong speaks, or um, Vana speaks up and says, "Yes, uh, these this city has a totem for a spirit that lives nearby off of the island right here." And she kind of points over to, if you guys look on the map, there is a small island right next to Bay Long within the river. She points to that and says, uh, Some of us believe that that is the cause of people's disappearances. There may be some in- interference with the totem. Uh, we want you guys to check that out and make sure that everything there is is good. Then Torque speaks up and says, There's also... One thing that's uh, kind of neat here, and he smirks, and he goes, This is also the city where you might have heard of them. It's one of the biggest Uber companies in the entire country. Uh, Second Century Lion Fox uh, has a base in this city here. If uh, you get a chance, and he kind of just looks over at Taro, do you mind getting the an autograph for me from the... Uh, the CEO. I've always wanted to meet the guy. I'm gonna wink at him and say, I'll try. Isn't Bay Long just like the, was founded by the Bay Fong family? No, you're thinking of Bay Fong, uh, which is actually, uh, I believe, southeast of here. And Shang speaks up and goes, This is your own country, and you do not know where your cities are. And Torque just kind of pauses for a second, ignores it, and continues. He goes, uh, no, this, the city that you guys are heading to is Bay Long. Okay. We need you guys to give you a recap. Go to this city. Find out the source, the cause, I should say, of why people have been going missing. And report it back to us. That way we can have Team... 1B, go in and make any arrests if need be. You guys are strictly there just to gather information. Okay, so do we talk to the mayor first? Let's see, can we get any uh, more information? Vana speaks up and says, just when you get there, talk to whoever you can. As long as you guys are wearing your white lotus sashes, no one's going to question why you guys are asking all of this. Uh, the United Provinces is pretty good to the to the White Lotus Society. They treat us very well, very respectful. You probably won't even have to pay for a hotel. They, you know, you might have to show them your sash, and they'll book a hotel room for you guys for free. You guys may get fed. You know, they take good care of us in any of the cities that's in the provinces. Just go talk to whoever you can. Is that Yang? How do we get there? Mark gives a smirk and pulls out, uh, it looks like some small pieces of paper, sets them down on the map, and Earth bends it over to each one of you. Um, it shoots in the four different directions that each one of you are sitting on. You guys pick up the paper and you realize that it is a ticket. And as you look at it and read it over, he goes, these are going to be train tickets. Uh, you guys can travel there by train. Uh, we will take you guys to the nearest train station. From there, you will be taken to the city. Oh, I, oh, I thought we can just uh, uh, use your flying bikes and just take us there. If anybody turned to look at Yang, you would notice that he's pale and breathing re- rather shallowly. <laughs> You okay? I'm fine. He picks up the ticket, looks at it with uh, scrutinizing eyes, and keeps his mouth shut. <laughs> okay. Um, Mark heard um, Kevin say that and say, uh, he'll go, uh, do you want to fly the bison? I'll take take the train. She looks over at you and says, Yang, you can speak here. What is is on your mind? Nothing, Master. It's not important. Are you sure? 
if the rest of my party would like to travel by train, then train is ad adequate enough for me as well. Okay, so the rest of the party, how do y'all feel? I don't want to go on a flying bison. <laughs> I uh, don't have good experiences with trains. Okay, so it sounds pretty... What? Two and two. You yeah, know what? I'll take the train. Uh, yeah, I think you're old enough to have some some beverages, so we can get, get you liquor up. I mean, sedated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we can. Oh, there's many ways we can get you on a train. Just leave it to us. Yeah, Yang, uh, you're hearing him say this stuff. You have no idea what kind of drinks he's talking about. <laughs> I getting very ups uh, vis uh, visibly upset but I just simply say I mean as I said if you wish to travel by train then we can travel by train it's perfectly fine by me that torque speaks up and he's like guys like it's just a, a train well you know what and torque puts his hand down uh, not hard but it definitely leaves a thud uh, as he places it down on the uh, on the map, he goes, "Y'all can talk this out in your rooms, however you guys want to get there. Just wake up in the morning uh, as the sun is rising uh, in the courtyard, and we'll get everything taken care of." Sir, yes, sir. Roger. Thank you, everybody, for listening to Book One Search Episode Two. What's a TV? If you enjoyed hearing this podcast, then follow us on any of your social media platforms, as well as YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts, all under the name Dicebenders D&D. Dicebenders is a homebrew Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition live-action playcast using class models based off of D&D Wiki. This game is set in the world of Avatar, created by Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Konietzko, published by Nickelodeon. All credits for music and sounds will be found in the show notes. Special shout out to our number one fan, Craig. Thank you for being there for us from day one.